Hello, my name is Prosper Obum Anuforo. I am a writer, poet, and biochemist, and I am also a curator at Science Talks Africa. Um, although I live and operate from Nigeria, um, my project Science Talks Africa is aimed at creating a vibrant community of African scientists through conversation and collaboration. Um, so where was I when the Berlin Wall fell on November 9, 1989? I was barely a year old when that happened, so I don't have any memories of that. But if I were to hazard a guess as to what I was doing, I probably was somewhere yammering away, because my parents tell me that I talked a lot when I was a kid, so I probably was talking, definitely. Um, I have always been an empath. And I think this informed my desire to become a Catholic priest as a child, so I could offer selfless service to humanity. Uh, although I am not a priest now, but I am still on the path to make people's lives better through science. So to an extent, I'll say yes, my wish is coming through. My project helps break the science communication wall in Africa. And um, what challenges does my project address and what is my solution? Um, most countries in Africa are currently grappling with a dysfunctional healthcare system and a teeming population. And um, as, the, as the world faces the current pandemic that has overwhelmed even the best of healthcare systems across the globe, information becomes not only vital for third world countries, but also life-saving. And this is what Science Talks Africa tries to solve. Uh, we engage experts in various fields of the sciences, uh, which is almost as effective as grabbing important scientific information from peer-reviewed science journals and magazines, and bring it closer to the common people, relayed with conversational simplicity on social media. And this is how we are helping to bridge the gap, uh, the information gap between people. To introduce my project in one sentence, I'll say Science Talks Africa is a project aimed at creating a vibrant community of African scientists and researchers through conversation and collaboration. Now, the project was first created to counter the spates of misinformation based on pseudoscience and conspiracy theories which followed the outbreak of COVID-19 in Africa. Uh, we had talks with experts, with researchers and scientists who gave expert information on issues ranging from 5G technology to vaccine development. So that helped to an extent to quell the fear which existed uh, within Africa following the outbreak of COVID-19. So what was the surprising uh, thing for me? Uh, what surprised me the most was the yawning gap which I actually found existed between research institutes and the common people in Africa. So when people often uh, want scientific information, they do not know where to turn. And that is what Science Talks Africa is helping to bridge. Now what makes Science Talks Africa unique is in the fact that it is structured to reach more people with information that will help them live better. Now, especially in the midst of the current um, pandemic, uh, we kicked off in mid-May this year, and currently we are able to reach about 2,500 people weekly with our weekly interviews on Facebook, on our Facebook page, and we engage over 500 out of that. I do not think I can exhaust the benefits of science communication, especially as it pertains to Africa. Since my project kicked off in May, the changes have been astounding, especially in the area of awareness. And we find more and more people who ordinarily would rather engage with social media memes and idle banters have brought about the same enthusiasm in following sci in the sciences. Uh, we have been able to create um, a pool of scientists, technocrats, and inventors who have shown 
willingness to join in the kind of conversation we envisaged from the very outset. And these, I think, are some of the, the immediate parts of, of the project uh, outside others. Well, I would say that they have been very, very supportive. In fact, I currently cover some of the costs of running the project from generous donations from them. So I am really grateful to them and they've been very supportive. I would say that the major aim of Science Talks Africa is actually to create a vibrant community of African scientists who can work in Africa. And this forms key parts of uh, the questions we throw to our scientists and researchers weekly. We ask them about the current conditions of the African science ecosystem and how it has impacted their areas of research. And it bothers me that most of the time the answers are not positive. Now, three years ago, I lost my aunt to, to dysentery. She died from a diarrhea-induced dehydration because her daughter kept handing her cups of water instead of ORS solution. Now, how do I improve the efficiency of science information distribution in Africa across the educational and the digital divide? How do I reach people with the right information at the right time? This keeps me awake at night more than anything else and I hope to be able to answer those questions someday.